Hey everyone, Tyler here at the Movie Beat. We're back on another day out in Korea. Um, it is springtime, and if you are in Korea during the spring, I definitely recommend you guys come to Yoido Park, also known as Yoinaru, the area that I am in right now. And there are a bunch of cherry blossoms. So this is actually called like a cherry blossom festival. So there is a lot of people here now. There's always a lot of people here, but definitely now more than usual. And a lot of people come here, you know, as a date or um, people make it kind of a yearly tradition to come check out the cherry blossoms. This is a hot spot for it. So I thought we could walk through, take a look at it and then go to the um, Han River, which is the park right next to it. So we can take a look. The park is right to my right here. So there is a ton of people out here just having picnics, hanging out. Um, it's a decent day, it's kind of overcast, but this is pretty much prime time for the cherry blossoms. So let's go through, let's check out some of the trees. It's considered kind of a beautiful walk. So this is definitely a must visit when you guys come to Korea. If you didn't know, these trees are kind of famous for blossoming and wilting within like a week. So you have a very short window of time to come check it out. I mean, they are literally falling on me as we speak. So once they bloom, you gotta come. I'm not really a big tree person, but this is probably my favorite one, if I had to choose. So it is a bit weird being here during the pandemic, but everyone seems masked up. There's a lot of um, reminders to kind of stay clean, stay distanced. Let's head over to the park. So you can see way back there, that's the Han River. That is the river that divides the north part and the southern part of this, the city, Seoul, here. So we are currently on the southern part, which you would say Gangnam. That means southern river in Korean. So that is our area right now. There's a lot of different bridges that you can cross. So the cool thing to note about this park for me as a film lover, as a Korean movie lover, is if you guys watched the <laughs> Bong Joon-ho film, the host, or Gwe Mul, the opening scene and that family, they really had a uh, little convenience store placed on the park. So the park really extends the whole length of the river, almost on both sides. Obviously there's some breaks and things like that. So when that monster blows out of the water and everyone's running in the park, this is the park that they're running through. So maybe we can get close and check out one of the bridges. And I also want to point out one other really cool thing in relation to another Korean film that you can see when you come to this area. So let's get close to the water. There's a ton of people out here. Um, we might get a snack later, but I'm becoming more worried now. I was gonna eat some ramen, which is what a lot of people do, or they order some fried chicken. Um, and it's, Believe it or not, they will find where you're at and deliver your chicken here. So typically you would come to this station, it's on line five, the one that I'm at right now, Yoinaru, and you will be bombarded by a bunch of older ladies giving you flyers for, uh, for chicken. They are not here right now, maybe it's a rule for the pandemic or whatnot, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot of chicken delivery going on. So let's go down and take a closer look. Maybe in some of my other videos where I went out, you saw a lot of older people um, in the town that I was in. But if you come here, you're gonna see a lot of young people, university students, high school, maybe even younger, and families. And I'm sure you've seen in many films that big gold tower, that's called the 63 building. 
It's a landmark. Uh, it used to be the tallest building in the country. Now it's Lotte World Tower. And I don't see it right now, but when I came here last year, everyone was in a tent. It was like super popular. Now everyone is back on a blanket, sitting on the grass. Um, you can rent bicycles here. I uh, gave somebody my ID. There's a lot of bike outlets and you can get a bike and you can just ride your bike pretty much the whole length, as much as you want, maybe for an hour, two hours, whatever. This is also the park you would visit if you are here in the fall for the fireworks festival. But that is um, another beast in itself. I mean, this many people times a billion. So you gotta come like 10 hours early. But I like coming here and it does feel a little bit like I'm getting out of the city, even though it, in a weird way I am right in the middle of the city. So it's a, actually a really nicely designed park in a lot of ways. And one thing that I notice differently than um, say like an American park, here you've got families, you've got you know just young people having a good time. There's really no um, like undesirables hanging around. It's very safe. You've got fairly clean bathrooms, a lot of convenience stores. I mean, if we just glance over here, just look how many people are here just hanging out. I mean, this looks like the 4th of July, but it's Thursday. Definitely a hot picture spot. It's pretty nice. Ooh, that's bright. So we've got uh, a sign here for a lot of different cities. Tokyo, that's uh, 1,158 kilometers away. Sao Paulo, Taipei, Sydney, Bangkok, Rome, Paris, wherever you're at, I'm right here. So you guys can come and visit. I always love getting right up next to the water. <laughs> Looks like it's splashing pretty good. Oh, it's a guy. <laughs> so he's having fun splashing the ladies here. That's pretty cool. Ooh, they got it good. <laughs> So this place is a great place to come to pretty much any time of year. But in the spring especially, it's perfect weather. You get the cherry blossoms. You get the guy on the jet ski spraying you. Normally, uh, people go to the convenience store. They get some beers. Um, they get some ramen. I've actually um, had a couple picnics here where I brought my own booze, brought my own snacks. Uh, and we just kind of chilled all day. It was really fun. This is just a Thursday, guys. The regular Thursday, nothing special going on. Just everybody out enjoying themselves. This is one of my favorite things about living in Seoul. People are enjoying themselves. You don't hear anybody angry. You don't hear anybody upset. It's a lot of happy sounds. So if you guys watched um, the, the movie The Host, like I mentioned earlier, you know, there's a lot of bridges like this, but the monster was definitely living, you know, under one of these bridges and you could see it swinging. Uh, so whenever I see one of these bridges, I'm reminded of the host, which is a cool thing to be reminded of. Once again, this is uh, Yoido Park. And if I wasn't wearing a mask, I would 100% be wearing my sunglasses because it is a bright sunny day. So when I was saying the host, was living under a bridge like this, this is what I meant. It's actually really cool looking. 
Kind of freaky when you think about a monster living under there though. I want to get another close look at that island from Castaway on the Moon. We're getting pretty close to it now. Um, I've actually seen a couple times there were some K-pop and other concerts that were um, done here. But as you can see, we are pretty much right in the heart of the city, um, you know, just a couple blocks away. And then you can come out here and voila, we're in nature, like in the middle of nowhere. It's a really cool, peaceful feeling uh, because sometimes you just really want to get away from the cars, the sounds of the city. It's actually very feasible here once you're living in Seoul. So let's get a better look at the island that Castaway on the Moon was filmed in. So behind me, that is the island that Castaway on the Moon took place on. So I'd always loved coming here and being reminded of that film as well. This little island, um, it might not look like an island, but it's definitely in the middle of the river. It's actually called Bamsum, but that's where the main character got stranded in the film. So always a cool spot to visit.
So we're here in Yoido. This is like a business district here in Seoul. A lot of the tallest buildings are here. <laughs> So yeah, this is a brand new department store that just opened up for a shopping mall in general called the Hyundai Seoul. It looks huge. And I really like the red lights. Should we check it out? Pretty sweet looking. Probably won't do the grand tour because there are many, many floors here. Here's a bubble factory going on in there. Just had to add the Hyundai department store to my chat. This is some kind of a bubble factory world. because everybody's over at the Cherry Blossom Festival still. That will continue well into the night because unlike some parks maybe in America that they close at you know, dusk or dark, people can really stay there through the night and they will be drinking, playing, doing lots of fun stuff, meeting new people. That's just kind of what they do here. So this is the day to come and check out the new mall. That was pretty nice. 
nice mall. Definitely the bubble forest is worth checking out. There's actually another really big mall up here called IFC because I was kind of craving some Panda Express. It's probably one of the only places I know of you can get it here. I've moved several times um, while I've lived in Seoul, but I used to actually live right near this Yoido district. And I used to come here all the time for my movies because there is a CGV theater located inside and it is really nice. So you might want to walk through it, you know, for old time's sake, if we can. I always felt like I was coming into the future when I came to this mall. they let us inside. It doesn't look like it. It seems like CGV is closed off for people that don't have tickets. That's unfortunate because this one is really fun to walk through. Yeah, so we gotta buy a ticket for a movie, and I can't see a movie right now. A little bit of a time schedule, but we will come back. Trust me. Bummer. Well, let's get some Panda Express. taken out at Panda Express and I saw that they had a YP book so it's not Kyobo books but 
This one does look like it's remodeled, so I have to check it to make sure that they don't have any DVDs or Blu-rays that I didn't know about, because that can't happen. There can't be any bookstores that I don't know that they have Blu-rays, so let's go take a peek and double check just to make sure. It almost looks like a mini kill boat. But for some reason it feels like they must have expanded or something. So we gotta try to smell out the electronic section if they have one. There's something about bookstores in Korea that are just so nice. Album, so that might mean DVD. Yeah, we definitely have K pop limited edition stuff. They've got DVDs, but they're pretty cheap. It's about $4 to $10. The only thing I would recommend is probably EY Shinji's Love Letter, but tons more, tons more uh, K-pop stuff here. So definitely the music stuff is here. Oh, we got DVDs over here. Okay, it is all, whoa, look at that. They've got the Plain Archive Macbeth. I don't know if that's sold out, but that's kind of a nice find, of, you know, just some bookstore that you walk into in Korea. Plain Archive's Macbeth. Wow, everything else looks kind of very standard edition. A lot of kids, Disney. Um, yeah, a lot of Power Rangers. Ghibli stuff. Some Korean stuff. Here's Taxi Driver. Um, DVD though. And can you believe? This is the Man From Nowhere limited edition CJ Entertainment DVD digibook. That's kind of amazing to find here. Brand new. Hmm. Cool. I'm also seeing Roaring Currents limited edition. This is a beefcake pack. Wow. Big box. It's very surprising to find brand new here. Okay, well it's nice to know that they have those limited DVDs. Uh, just a couple of them left. So, now we know. This is YP Books at IFC Mall.
I'm at a uh, cafe called Paul Bassett. Uh, do you mind uh, ice cream? Cup? Cup it up. Here you go, ice latte. Standard. Original? Your check-in. This is probably what they're referring to when they mention those vaccine passports. It's probably going to look something like this QR code. So it was a pretty fun day out. I hope you guys enjoyed the Cherry Blossom Festival. Just remember, um, because of coronavirus, it wasn't really the official festival this year. So a lot of the vendors and uh, things like that that would make it a little bit more festive environment uh, wasn't there. Usually there's people you know, drawing caricatures and a lot of different like more street activities. Uh, that was gone, but still, you know, they can't stop the turnout. There was still a lot of people. So everybody's out enjoying the, you know, the blossoms and all of that. So, you know, it's kind of a makeshift unofficial festival. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well as my little tour through some of these really nice shopping malls. Uh, had some kind of cool surprises and it was a pretty fun day out overall. So I'm really happy that you guys could join me on this. Let me know if you enjoy these videos and I'll keep making them. There's a lot of really cool spots that we can go to um, and I hope you guys liked some of the things that I was able to point out as far as how they relate to Korean cinema because that is our shared number one passion after all. So until next time, I'm going to get home and um, watch some more movies. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tyler at the Movie Beat. Keep watching movies.